I don't know if this, oh my God, it goes in my ear. Yes, yes, yes. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Senator. How Hello. are you? I just want to say thank you. You are literally a very long time before we both were sitting here. I just started following you from afar and you were like a like a light worker and, and you know I think we're all part of a constellation and we lean on each other's light because there's so much darkness in the universe and so you're just one of those folks I, I admire and I'm grateful for and I, I source myself from your, uh, your Instagram feed. So oh my you. gosh but the same because especially with obviously the work that you do in the political space but the human that you are and how you motivate and inspire people so much with whatever you're going through personal or even just like the goals you're setting for yourself you running outside yeah <laughs> I honestly got me starting to be like yeah I need to get my cardio up like, yes I tried to join the run club I did I made it w one time <laughs> it was tough I'm so happy to be here I can't believe they invited creators for the it, first time it's so smart though I'm sorry to interrupt you but like I, I just looked at the data Mm -hmm. The major, the biggest voting block, sort of like uh, Gen Z, is going to be the biggest voting block. Yes. But if you add even even millennials in, the majority of them get their news not from CNN or MSNBC, right. but from their devices. So yeah. you all are really becoming the trusted news sources. Right. It's a lot more fractured. It's not like 50 million people watching like we when I was a child. Never I was watching like Walter Cronkite. Yeah. But but you're you're such an important part of our democracy now. And so I'm just grateful that they they realize this. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm so excited too because I don't know if you remember, but when I interviewed you for YouTube, when we were in the green room in the back, I was telling you, I was like, yeah, it's so cool that YouTube has me up here interviewing you now because they used to take down my videos. Did they really? Yeah, my political videos. So to now it be like, oh yeah, we're looking to these to influencers now for the news. Like when I used to talk about certain things, it wasn't monetizable. It wasn't. Um, worthy at that point. Yes, and yes. we've come a far, we've come a long way. Yes, so yes. I'm really happy about that. Um, I wanted to ask you because one of the things that I notice is that I feel like we don't keep up the momentum from one election season to the yes. next election season. How do we, how do we do that? How how do we do that so we don't have to start over every time? Well, first of all, you're you're kind of doing that because you're keeping the conversation relevant all the way through. Mm -hmm. A lot of it goes on us. Like I'm, even at my age, I'm considered young for the United States Senate. So yeah. some of my colleagues don't have email. They, they use flip phones. And they're used to communicating in a different way. Yeah. What I think we really need to do is start really building platforms. Like you see a lot of the younger Congress people doing where they have platforms where they're constantly in conversation. Yeah. They're constantly building community. And so one of the hopes and influences I hope to have in the Senate um, is to try to set, let people understand you just can't come around and start amplifying your voice mm -hmm. and buying TV commercials, stuff like that, as it gets closer to the campaign. Mm -hmm. It has to be a constant conversation. Yeah, as far as, in connection with community. And that's the other thing that I want to talk about, too, is like how do we leverage the momentum from a national level on the elections and really use that to bridge the gap and create sustainability at the local level? Yes, yes. well, somebody was up here talking to us before, and she was just like, Look, I'm, a, I'm running for a local election. And what people don't often understand is that everybody, look, this presidential race is vitally important. But, yeah. you know, Joe Biden wouldn't have signed any of these epic bills, you know, freedom to marry, uh, all the way to Juneteenth. All these things would not have gotten passed, lowering prescription drugs if it wasn't legislation written in Congress. And we, it was so close in Congress that if we had lost like one senator, a lot of these bills wouldn't get passed. So people sometimes go in and vote for president, they forget to start working down there. Yes. And now th think about this, state laws. Like we're seeing this now with reproductive rights, mm -hmm. that state legislators are taking rights away from people. Yeah. And so like when you go in and vote, you should be voting all the way down the ticket mm -hmm. and focus on the local elections. Absolutely. And I started as a city council yeah. person in my city. And I'm so grateful that I had that experience of really being a grassroots leader and organizer. Mm -hmm. So I'm just hoping people understand that it's not an every four-year election. In many mm -hmm. states, it's every year. In New Jersey, every year we have something on the ballot to go voting for. We've got to start making it something that we get involved in. Yeah. And the last thing I want to say, because I know the kind of people that follow you, I, I look in your comment section and everything. Oh my gosh! I'm really, I'm really, <laughs> I'm really hoping that uh, you and I both can encourage more young people to run. Yes. I mean, I mean, do it. Like. 
bring your voice. Don't grow cynical. Don't surrender cynicism. Yes. Be like the traditions in our country where people didn't like what they were seeing. They, they decided to change it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm doing a little bit. Since I've seen you, I'm now chair of a commission. I'm on some boards. I'm on a board with our district attorney as well. Are you serious? Yeah. Um, George Cascone. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's really cool the work that I'm able to do. And obviously, like, I'm planting seeds. I'm going to run in a couple of years. But I wanted to ask you that, too, because it's like sometimes... I think those of us that want to be in the space don't feel the support from those that are already doing it. Right. As soon as I met you, you said, listen, whatever I can help with, yes. that doesn't happen often. How do you support and reach back, especially community leaders? So one thing I want to say, there's an Oscar-nominated documentary called Street Fight about me trying to run for mayor of my, of, of my city. It got beat by March of the Penguins. <laughs> um, um, but I, I, I encourage people to watch that because I'm sorry that for young people, I was a young guy trying to run upset an establishment machine. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be easy. Yeah. It's going to be hard. They're going to mm-hmm. tell you, wait your turn. They're going to tell you no. Yeah. And you just can't listen to that. Okay. And, and I love the suffrage movement. Um, there's a woman named Alice Paul, very young. Mm-hmm. I think she's like in her 20s, was getting impatient with the establishment mm-hmm. suffrage people. Mm-hmm. So she breaks off and does new tactics. So she's young and an innovator. Mm. She was the first person in American history ever to protest in front of the White House. Oh, wow. Then they arrested her. Of course. Put her in an insane asylum, because that's what you do with strong women. She went on a hunger strike. This is before Gandhi. And they, they tortured her. They used to shove tubes down her throat. Oh, my God. Thank God a, a, a media person wrote about it. It became such a scandal that it changed public opinion to her side. Mm. And the president she protested came out and joined her. Wow. So young people are innovators. They don't. They're not settled with the way things are. They think of new ideas. Mm-hmm. So I'm. Uh, I'm pledging to you. I want to do whatever I can to help young leaders coming up because yes. I was that young leader. Yes. But don't wait for somebody to give you permission, assistance. Just please go out and take it. Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. I needed that, and also everybody else needed to hear that. Everybody know to please use their voice and vote. Yeah. About the importance of yeah, that. Yeah. You're, you're really. In a democracy, your power lies in the ability to vote. It really does. And there are people that are very invested in you not voting. And I believe the opposite of love isn't hate, it's apathy or indifference. They want you to be apathetic or indifference. They, they don't want you involved. And right now, we desperately need to turn the page generationally in our country. We really do. God bless the baby boomers. We still want them active and involved. But we need Gen Z. We need the millennials, we need the alphas coming up. And if you are not at the table, they're going to make decisions about you. And I don't think it should be about us without us. So please get that it done. That far, yes. 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 Thank you so much. Thank for you. It's so good to see you.